Welcome to this special edition of First Page Fridays, a video series from the Ames Free Library. Hello. You are probably going to be hearing this on this Friday, which is May 6th. However, I'd like to indicate that Mary Ames Frothingham died on May 5th, on the fifth day of the fifth month of the 55th year. The focus this morning is on the house that she had built called Wayside. She was born in 1867, and by the time she was an adult, she was still single and therefore decided to build her own house, Wayside. It was built in the late 1890s, and in May of 1916, she married Lewis Adams Frothingham, an outstanding military person. He had also been, um, while he was at Harvard, not only the captain of the soft baseball team as a senior, but also as a junior. She bought what was the Anna C. Ames gym and made it into the Frothingham Hall. And at one end, the end at the south side, she had the American Legion established. She was very much involved, and her husband, Lewis Adams Frothingham, became the commander for the local group and vice commander for Massachusetts. She was involved in many, many things which hopefully you will get a copy of Wayside and look at. She was uh, particularly involved with the library where we are right now. And we have, in addition to the church and village cemetery, she was also a major benefactor of the Ames Free Library, a trustee of the library for half a century. She was president of the Ames Free Library from 1929 until her death. Her portrait hangs in the reading room of the library. I would like to just mention a couple of things that she was concerned about. The head librarian lived upstairs, and there's steps that, as you look across, you will see lead up to her apartment. There was one telephone which was here on this level. And that obviously meant that if the phone rang, Miss Lamfrey, when she was not on duty, would have to come down the steps to get to it. Mrs. Frothingham immediately decided that she should have a telephone in her apartment, which was definitely appreciated. She was also concerned that there was no real children's room. The library basically ended where the desk catalog was. And therefore, um, there was probably a table. It might have been here in the reading room, or it could have been over um, maybe on the left-hand side. And that was something that she talked about frequently. Adjacent to her estate, Wayside, where she was living, was Spring Hill. That's an estate to the left of Wayside. And living there was William Hadwin Ames and his wife, Fanny Holt Ames. After Mr. Ames died, Fanny decided that she would add the children's wing. So the children's wing which has existed since the 1930s, was actually paid for by Fanny Holt Ames. She was also very, very generous to the library in addition to the children's wing. She gave, at one time, $10 million for the library and subsequently $5 million. These two are called the Fanny Holt Ames Trust, and that is still paying for the interest from those trusts 
are paying for some of the expenses of this library today, for which we are very fortunate. Mrs. Frothingham will live, as I said, until May 5th, 1955. What would come to, what would happen to Wayside? There was a whole question. The town office used to be on the second floor of a building not too far from here. And so the discussion was, would Wayside, this large building, be actually the possibility of the town office? Before I read that last paragraph, I just want to show, if you haven't seen the booklet, there is a picture here of Mr. and Mrs. Frothingham, and also in the middle is, unfortunately it's not in color, is the Rose Garden, which received national honors at Wayside. After Mrs. Frothingham died, the question was what happens to her house. After having attempted for several years to find a new location for the town office, it was suggested that maybe Wayside might be the home of the new town office. Several meetings occurred among the chairman of the committee, Mrs. John S. Ames Sr., and others. And a generous offer was made by Mrs. Ames to give the house with approximately 8.6 acres of land to the town of Easton for town purposes. The only restriction was nothing could be built between Elm Street and here. In other words, you would miss the beauty of Wayside. And so on June 20th, 1960, at a special town meeting, the town voted unanimously to accept the offer and extend a rising vote of thanks to Mrs. John S. N. Sr. for her kindness and generosity to the town. No major construction had to happen. The rooms basically are the same size today that they were when this was built in the 1890s. So, Many acts of kindness were done by Mrs. Frothingham or Mary S. Ames before she became Mrs. Frothingham. So I really advocate taking a chance to find a copy of Wayside and enjoy it. Thank you.